was no script, there was no direction, there was nothing like this in the world. The very first time I walked into the building, it hit me like, I need to be here. Those voices wow. are talking about 299 Queen Street West, the headquarters of much music. What that place dignifies, molding the youth experience is endless. And it's the topic of a new doc coming out next month called 299 Queen Street West, directed by Hamilton's own Sean Menard. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. We're pumped to have two of the many, many VJs over the years. Hamilton's own oh. Rick Campanelli. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank guys, you so much for having yes. us. Thank awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank awesome. You. This is Great so to cool be here. just to even have you guys here together. Because when was the last time you would have done something on TV together? Last time we were joking around with each other, because that's basically what we did every time we were in front of a camera, was... Uh, 23 years ago? 23 yeah, years ago. Yeah, we were going to do the math, and we just did the math. <laughs> <laughs> on, on my fingers, I went 10, 20, 1, 2, 3. Because that's when Bill left Much Music. To go upstairs to Much More to, Music. To, to you much graduated. Music. 2000, 2000, and then you stuck with Much until 2005, and I left that same year that's to go right. to Edmonton. Edmonton. Okay. Yeah. Edmonton. Let's quickly talk about Sean, because it would not happen <sighs> without Sean. I know he's on. You guys are on this tour right now. He got in late from Calgary. He was yeah. supposed to be here. but He's, he's watching, be, though. He's yeah, watching He's going to be at the show tomorrow night in his hometown. His show. You're going to be here, too, in your hometown. You're going to be there, too. Absolutely. In Hamilton. Ontario Place? First Ontario Place. A, uh, a, a, AKA Hamilton Place. Hamilton Place, there right. Go, we um, when, when, <laughs> when Sean came to you saying, oh, listen, I'm doing this doc on, on much yeah. music, what, what, what were your thoughts? I thought, um, well, that's going to be a bit daunting. Um, you, how many tapes are you going to have to go through? Uh, and it was like a love affair for five or six years, yeah. I think, he was working yeah. on this. Think about it. Uh, 20 years using hundreds and hundreds of tapes to screen. And where do you begin? Like, how do you tell a story like that? And he did it. He yeah. did it. And God bless him for keeping uh, what much music was to a whole generation, really introducing did, yeah. that to a new generation who've never heard of us before. What made that building so special, Rick? Mm. Oh, it, it was what we're looking at right now. The people that came down, the music lovers that came down. I remember doing this before I even started on Much as a VJ. But you can come down, you could look into the fishbowl, and when we opened up those windows, you can come right on into the environment and be part of it. It wasn't just about us doing the interview with the stars. It was about everybody participating, asking questions, being there, taking pictures. It was, that was the most beautiful thing for me. And letting interviews breathe. If you were oh, into sure. an artist, oh, sure. you yeah. could watch an interview. Wow, I don't think that happens anymore. It's about the 10 second sound bite now. You know, who is dating who, who's in rehab, who's breaking up with who. Yeah. There uh, was a time where you can let interviews breathe and get into it. And if you were a fan of that artist, you loved it. If you were didn't know that artist, you got into them because you, you got to know them. You, you bring up, up something amazing. Remember the artist Ben Harper and the For Innocent sure. Criminals? Yeah. I, I interviewed him the first time and when you, you would ask him a question and he would sit there and think about it for a good five seconds. And I'm, I'm looking around, I'm like, what's going on here? All this dead air is not good. But that's just the way he responded to your questions. He had to think about it, take it all in, and then he spit, spit back out. How did you, so answer. The, the intimate and interactive, those are what you're talking about, where you did have an artist come in or and perform in, in that little set. Or right? even in the afternoon, they oh, yeah, would come yeah, by yeah. live. How did you guys fight for those interviews? How did that happen? Was there fighting? Bill Was there got friction? all the good ones. <laughs> Did you? I'm, I'm, I'm bigger than Rick. I'm bigger than Rick. So I go. And Rick, you're older than Rick. Rick, Oasis Rick. is coming to town, huh? I never. Is that how it works? Though? Like, did you guys like negotiate, or is it like? I, how, how did there was never, That's a good question. I yeah, think you? the programmers knew who we were fans of, and right. it would make it easy if, if Oasis was coming to town. Oh, uh, Bill, yeah, Oasis yeah, is coming yeah. to town. Because you, you have a nice connection with them, a nice relationship. With them. I got pigeonholed into the boy band in the pop stars right, right. away. I don't know why. I mean, you were always the girls were screaming for you. That's why. Is, which girls? Who? Yeah, the, like the, if girls were screaming for it, there's a thing. No. If Backstreet Boys <laughs> or Instinct was in the studio, that's everyone the same would, hat by the way. I'm wearing the same <laughs> hat today. Everyone would tune we in. The same. Everyone would tune in. All the screaming. They hear the screaming. They weren't screaming for the boy bands. They were screaming for Rick. Because you, the, as the VJs, you guys yeah. were just as big as the artists. <laughs> I'm gonna stop that. <laughs> this is great stuff here, man. By the way, look at that hair. We went through so many different hairstyles, Brian. I'm telling you, back in the day. Yeah, we all, okay. Frosted so, tips so, so, and all that. So we, so we, so we only got a minute. You guys have been touring across the country. Okay, yes. so what was what what that experience? The tour's been amazing. This, it's, this film and, and an intimate and interactive afterwards. Afterwards, <clears throat> so we've been to seven cities already. It, the, the turnout has been fantastic. It really is a trip down memory lane. Like, well, you're showing a lot of the footage that will be in the film, and you see these interviews from yesteryear. But people are coming out. People, young Canadians in this country, had a, a connection with much music back yeah. in the day, and and they. 
They want to relive that. Look at this one uh, right Bill, here. Bill, Classic Bill, interview Bill right with, there. Bill with his hair. Okay, so we got to go. <laughs> Bill, stick around because he has a book coming yeah. out. He's going to sit down with Emily Vukovic. But he's going to be there tomorrow night I at get to, uh, to First to Ontario here. Place um, <laughs> for the uh, Much Music 299 King Street Never West changes documentary. This guy. Never it's changes. Be a lot of oh, this man. Man. oh, thank you, man. Oh, thank you, brother. That's a big guy. Watch the poppies. Watch the poppies. Oscar Weaver, go Cats. Yeah, there he is right there. Oh, Sean, I love this guy. Hair envy. Since first stepping in front of Much Music's national cameras in 1992, Bill Wilichka has become one of Canada's most recognizable television personalities. He is now taking us behind the scenes in his new book, Bill Wilichka, A Happy Husband. Exciting times and lessons learned by one of Canada's foremost entertainment journalists. Hi. Hi, Emily. Okay. Thanks for having me, by the way, and I gotta give huge props to everyone that works here. You have a great product on the air. Thank uh, you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, we love it. From the receptionist, to the camera people, to the on-air people, I to know. the producers, to the control room. Thanks for having me. That's uh, why we're all still here. And everyone's happy, which <laughs> it is, is the most important thing. It's true. Um, speaking of happy husband, you're not a husband. Why do you call yourself that? <laughs> I love that, though. Like, you I work in that. Kingston at CKWS, my old stomping ground, where yes. I actually started broadcasting. Big shoes to fill. And that's not being a husband, Bill. To some I am, though. When I look, and I talk about this in the book, um, to some, they might remember me if you don't live in the GTA or if you don't, you know, if you live in the West or in the East and you might hear my name, they're like, I think the reaction would be, oh, I remember that guy. Yeah. yeah. Where, where is he? Is he dead now? Whatever happened to Why? him? Why? Because much music doesn't really what exist a, anymore. Exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, oh, he's still working in television? Oh, he must be a has-been then. Oh. So I, I have fun with that. Yeah, it's like a running joke. And there are people that know me uh, and have followed my career from day one. And there are people in Kingston that don't even, or Eastern Ontario, that don't know that I had a music journalistic past. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, so it, it, it encompasses all that. So but the most important part of the word is happy in exactly. the title. Exactly. And now your career it spans so many, uh, I don't want to say so many decades because you're still a young guy. I but started when I was seven. Right. <laughs> so many decades. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to finally put it all down on paper? I've just been asked about a book for years and I would always think, I don't know if anyone's going to care. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't have a cure for cancer. All I did was interview rock stars for a living. But um, when I got to Kingston, I got asked to write a column for the Whig Standard oh, yeah. um, about my life and career. And I thought, okay, it might last three or four months. It went for five years. Wow. Um, and then during COVID, I kept getting asked to do all these podcasts. Mm -hmm. All these new podcasts were coming up. And they want to talk about my life and my career. And again, it was like, I don't know if anyone's going to care. So I started writing stuff down one day <laughs> and these stories that I was relating. And then one day I just started banging away at my computer. Yeah. And then uh, about six months later, I realizing I think this is a book <laughs> I, I think know. people might read this I think yeah <laughs> and then I finished the book in late 2022 I found a great publisher at the beginning of the year that said we can have it out uh, later this year it's your 35th anniversary of working in television um, this much music doc it's is coming deal. out and yeah. so everything is converging at once in the past several months and I'm loving it I'm loving it and I still have a full-time job in television well I'm a little intimidated to interview you because a lot of the book talks about your very unique and real and um, incredible approach to interviewing and I mean you used to make people cry like stars and not because you know they were so embarrassed it wasn't the goal well, no. I know but because you got so in-depth and so deep and they they trusted you and they opened you they allowed you into their personal space like that is so that is such a huge accomplishment when you're doing an interview I know because I do them all the time but I don't think I've ever had anybody cry well you know what it's <laughs> it's a uh, I it, I don't think there's anything uh, odd about my style, and that is just be honest, completely yeah. open and honest. And I approach every interview the same, and that is, it's their time to shine. Mm -hmm. um, I know some interviews interviewers approach it as like, well, I'm a star interviewing a star, and yeah. I've always sort of fought against that. And the idea is, you know, make it a pleasant experience for the interviewee, mm -hmm. make it a great experience for the audience who's mm -hmm. spending time watching, um, and make everyone happy. 
yeah. and get the story out. And everyone has a story. It's true. And essentially, for 35 years, that's all I've done is tell people stories. And what well, a you, fortunate position to be in. Yeah, you've done an incredible job. Uh, a happy has been. Of course, this is the book. We have 30 seconds left. I need to know your craziest interview. Like, who was the interview you walked away and you were like, that was nuts. There's been so many of them. I know, but you can only give me one because okay. I've got 30 um, seconds and I'm being yelled at. You know at. what? Uh, probably all the members of Led Zeppelin. I'm a huge Led Zeppelin fan. Ah. I've interviewed Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones yeah. at separate times. And? I had a Led Zeppelin uh, poster in my locker. That's amazing. And so, and it's happened, I call them perfect circles and the book is full of them where it's like, I can't believe yeah. I, this person was such a huge part of my life growing up. It's so cool. And now we're bonding and hanging out. And I think a lot of people can relate to that huge part of their lives with these rock stars, but not all of them are as lucky as you are to be able to chat with them. But you can live vicariously through Bill with a happy husband. Thanks for being here. Bill. Thank you, Emily. Thank Appreciate you so much. It.